Here's our Continental Tire race analysis. Two hour, 30 minute race, timed event of course. 23 GS cars, 34 ST. And you can see our pole sitters there, Buford and Fergus. Here comes the final corner, turn 11. They'll be on to the front straight away, and we can't overemphasize it. If the clouds dump on this racetrack, it is a whole new ball game. But for now, the track is dry, the sun is shining brightly, and the green flag waves. We're underway at Watkins Glen. Two Multimatic Astons leading the field to green. Jay Buford, fourth pole of the year. He is on fire and leads the pack down into turn one, Dorse. This is a great overtaking area, and you see three wide as we get in here. They're going to have to get it single file, though, before they head up the S's. You can go side by side, but it costs you a lot of time from this point up the hill. Well, on to the back stretch, headed for the inner loop. Fastest part of the racetrack right here. Here comes the street tuner start. Corey Fergus, screen left on the pole. Brand new race car this weekend. Switched to the newest Civic 2.4 liter. Got a little more oomph, which is needed here at Watkins Glen. And only five wide back in the middle. That's about normal <laughs> for here, though. There's a whole bunch of photographers just behind the tire wall down there in turn one because they know what can happen down there. You just got to play nice through this area, threading the needle. Tires aren't up to temperature yet, but great start by Fergus. Mosing always a factor there in the race epic BMW currently running second. Meanwhile, the GS battle down. Here's a look at what we've seen thus far in just nine laps. Nick Longy getting into the back of Matt Bell. Here's your big wreck, though. Derek Whitus got into the car ahead of him, into the wall on one side, into the crash barrels on the other side, and threw them into the Armco. A real impact. It's on those sand-filled barriers and that. Meanwhile, cars. This was the lead above 55 yep. car. Jay Buford now. This was just uh, under the uh, two-hour mark, so they probably think they can do it on one more stop. They also pitted with just over two hours to go, like the 55 did, eight of their effect repairs on the race car, but also top up with fuel. So they may be good to go on just one more stop as will the 55 car that we're now seeing trying to claw his way back through the pack. Take a look there, Jack Roush Jr. in the 61 Mustang started at the back. We never did find out exactly why that was. Didn't make any qualifying time, but you can tell from the team car that Shelby Blackstock's driving up in the front that the car should be good. Here comes Buford, he is charging. Aston Martin really been knocking on the door, showing speed all season long as is the case with Buford with uh, four pole positions, but Aston's still looking for that first victory. They've tried shaking up their strategies amongst the four Multimatic cars on occasion, but still searching for that elusive top step of the podium. Already seeing a dry line. Some of these cars run around the outside, which yeah. is the wet line. You see Jack Roush Jr. out there, but some of even this wet part of the racetrack now starting to show signs of uh, quick drying. Safety car is off, green flag is in the air, and we are back to racing. We're five wide already headed for one. Mancoso looks to the inside, trying to get on the inside of Eric Carr, and he does it. Look at this, Jay Buford, he's made a pissed off of fuel. He's all the way back up, but Paul is in fourth spot right now in another one of those white Aston Martins. These Astons look good in these conditions. Look at Buford, he's trying to make a move on Curran. Mm -hmm. Oh, Curran's in deep, he's in too deep. Good save, he just rode it right to the edge of the racetrack. Lost some ground, but didn't go off in that grass. Yeah, I think he saw that Buford was coming and just got a little bit late on the brakes, and you can't turn the wheel in, you just got to ride it out and try and keep it on the track. Here yeah. comes uh, Billy Johnson on him now. Yeah, Johnson up the inside will take that position. Battle for third in the overall, Buford and Johnson. Johnson is coming, he had yeah. a great run out of one. Looks to the inside. Going through the S's, he's on a charge. The, excuse me, Mike McGovern has taken over for Jim Click in the two. Let's get down to Justin Bell in the pit lane. In a, a braking issue with Michael at mid-Ohio, but then thought he's just avoiding the other car. Here we're with Brian Sellers here, battling for third spot with Jade Buford. Dry line continues to form on this part of the track. 
You know, when you get into a race like this where it's going to be wet for a while, dry for a while, you just have to have patience. You know, if, if the car is not particularly good when it's really wet, you, you have to stay on the racetrack. You just keep your wits about you, wait for the track to come back at you and attack again then. You know, you play it in segments. It's the only way you can do it. You can see from those leaves up or right that there is a breeze blowing out there as well, and that'll help dry the track. Sell has done a great job here. JB was down there when uh, suddenly they said, get your helm on and get in. Mark Bowden had passed the 30-minute mark in this race, and he's done a great job in clawing that four-line BMW up to the fourth spot. Look at this oh, little whoa, battle whoa, here. Whoa. <laughs> Oberlin. Oh, that was close. On Buford. Oh, he's going to tuck it in there. They're going to trade paint. No. No, Argy Bargy. But look at and this. The yeah. yeah. machine. <laughs> Who got the run but has nowhere to go with it. That's the problem yep. right here. You know, you got the momentum to go right by these guys. Oh, oh they're going to try to wreck each other. Wow, that is awesome stuff. Just great driving by both drivers there, Orbelin and Buford. Buford being hard to get along with on this passing deal right now. As you see the run bump, Porsche get by. He's done a good job, though. I mean, he's yeah. dealing with oh, two yeah. of the most experienced drivers in this category, and uh, he's hanging in there. He's not giving him an inch, but he's not playing dirty either. That's good stuff. So with the 51 pitting, plus the action you're watching on the right side of your screen, Billy Johnson is the leader. Bill Arberlin now into second. Matt Plum into third. Jay Buford drops back to fourth. To the pit lane. <laughs> 